Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you are returning, thank you as always for being here. I appreciate you more than I can say. I am super excited about today's DIYs, so let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. All right, I have this owl that I had picked up at Walmart last year. I think it was Walmart. And it's been sitting on my shelf and I've wanted to do something with them and today is the day. So I'm just thinking about how I want to go about this. And I pulled out a bunch of different chalk paints. This is the Java chalk paint by Home Decor. And my thought was I was gonna try to layer on paints and then take them off later with um, sandpaper. Didn't quite turn out the way that I had hoped, <laughs> but um, as far as that went, so I had to change strategies, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through what I ended up doing. So it's got a lot of little crevices in here, and that was what I was hoping to take advantage of. So this is just black chalk paint, also by Home Decor, and I am filling in all of his wings with the black. I had just done his chest with the Java, and I've got his wings with the black. So now I'm going to come in with some more black on his little toes because he has his little claws there. Yeah, again, I had a really good idea in my head and it just didn't pan out. But I think he turned out super cute in the end. So bear with me as I go through all of this. Um, so I'm adding in more black where there are what I would think of as shadows or places where I want to have some depth. And then I also brought in some black around his eyes. Now keep in mind while you're watching this that this is sped up. I was not going this quickly. <laughs> it looks like I'm just, you know, speeding through it right now as I watch it and uh, not really being careful. But I was trying to be super careful. Um, I was just finding my hand was a little bit shaky with the paintbrush. So it was a little bit more challenging than I, than I would have hoped. But um, I still had a really fun time bringing this little guy to life so um, i filled in his eyes <clears throat> at first i was just going to do the outer rims and then i decided to just go ahead and fill it all in and try and figure out how i wanted to move forward from there and you can see i'm just kind of thinking about what i want to do next and i'm going to bring in the white chalk paint now and i'm going to go over his little belly and see how it's got that detail i was hoping to not have the white paint uh, drop into ooh, drop into those crevices um yeah it, it wasn't 100 percent successful but i did go ahead and um once i had all of the white filled in on his little body i'm going to grab a mechanical pencil i'm not going to use the lead but you're going to see in just a second what i do to try and kind of carve out those shapes so there's the lead is not out i'm just kind of scraping the white paint away and then i noticed that it would because it would scrape the paint away i thought oh you know let me give him little feathery i don't know a texture <laughs> so i'm just going with the the um tip of the mechanical pencil and scraping away the paint so that the brown shows through so this is kind of along the lines of what i was trying to do and I don't think I actually even show you later with the sandpaper. I think I might have edited that out, but we'll see when we get there. Right now, I am mixing together oatmeal chalk paint by Home Decor along with some of the Java. I just wanted to um, get to a color that was kind of like a light brown, and the oatmeal was just too light for what I wanted. So here I am going over the black, and again, I was just trying to figure out the best way to do this so i went right over it thinking at this point that i was going to be coming through with sandpaper to just uh, scrape off a little bit of the brown and let the black show through when i actually did try to do that later on it took all of it off right down to the um, white plaster that i'm assuming this is made out of so yeah best laid plans right now I'm coming in with some of the Java chalk paint and I'm gonna highlight some of the areas where there might be shadow or places where I want more depth. And you're going to see as I go through this that I'm just gonna keep on layering color um, and getting until I get it to where I want it. 
that's one great thing about paint is that you can consistently go over it again and again with different colors and blending and just until you get it to where you want it it's not permanent by any stretch of the imagination and you can see i'm going over this with my blend right now and um, now i'm bringing in some more of the java around the eyes so now this is the lighter um, brown color that I used on the body, on his head. And I'm just trying to fill in this little area around his eyes. And again, I was finding that my hand just was not as steady as I would have, would have hoped. So it does look like a little bit of a mess right now, but don't worry, I'm gonna be um, fixing it with other colors. So now I am doing his little feet also with the java i did go over it completely thinking again excuse me that i was going to use the sandpaper and that actually was where i tried the sandpaper and saw that it just wasn't going to work so this light yellow color is called sunny porch and this one i just i thought it was just a little too light i'm using it for his eyes as well and i liked it for the eyes but for the nose i just felt like it was a little too light and you can see right there i had messed up and i got too much um, yellow covering the black i wanted to leave the black and so ultimately i was like you know what i'll just come back in with more black paint later <laughs> so uh lots and lots of layers going on here so i just ended up doing the whole eye both sides with the yellow i'll come back in with some more black then i pulled out my pumpkin chalk paint and i'm giving a little bit of the pumpkin color to his little beak coming back in with black for the center of the eye i'm just trying to be real careful to stay on the eye area and i was trying to leave a little bit of the yellow open so that it would give him um a little bit more life to his eyes but ultimately i decided you know what i'm just going to come in with some white a little bit later and do it that way so you know best laid plans because I, I i don't know i just wanted them both to look the same <laughs> so i'm coming in now with um it's kind of a little chippy brush and i was trying to do a little bit of dry brushing to blend this yeah, I was struggling a little bit with this, but um, but just working it along the edges of his eyes, just trying to give it a little bit of a feathery appearance and not really harsh lines because he is, excuse me, I'm yawning because it's late at night. Um, he is, um, he's a bird, right? So he's feathery and I want him to look a little bit feathery and soft. And so I'm just trying to, do what I can to kind of give that appearance. So <laughs> I think he's already starting to look super cute. But then I grabbed my little fan brush and I'm gonna grab my white chalk paint and I'm gonna start doing other light brush strokes. I started on the inside of his ears. So, and now I'm gonna do his head and his back and just again, try and give him um, some appearance of having feathers and give some depth and I want the pattern on his back to be able to show so I'm trying with my pencil again but the paint was already dry so it wasn't working the same way and then I tried grabbing my little Dollar Tree scraper tool I think this is actually for clay work but then I had my little pokey tool that I was trying I, I was just trying to distress it and have that black show through it wasn't super successful so moved on to other um, ideas so coming back through with my white I got a little heavy-handed with the white so then I did come back in with some other colors and I just figured you know the more I blend it and the more colors I use um, the more dimension we will probably have and it actually I, I like the way it turned out so I think I'm working with the brown now. Yes, the light brown. I am just going back over it because like I said, I'd gotten a little bit too much of the white, so I'm toning that down a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in with some black here now and do the same thing. Just kind of give him, because I mean, if you think about when you look at a bird or an owl, um, they've got multiple colors, right, in their feathers. They're not just one solid color. So just trying to give a little bit of that effect going over his entire 
um, back and head, his little wings. And now coming in with the white chalk paint for his eyes, just giving that little bit of light in his eyes and touching up some areas around on his body um, with the white. I then decided that his eye area was just a little too dark. I wanted to brighten it up a little bit. So I'm adding some highlights with the white chalk paint and just trying to brighten up his little face a little bit. And once I had gotten all of this done, I did give him a couple of coats of a high gloss um, spray clear coat finish. And I just think that that brought him all together and made him pop. But let me know what you think. DIY number two. All right, I have a Dollar Tree placemat and a whole bunch of the larger skewers also from Dollar Tree. I have gotten really bored with the way that I normally make my wood frames. And I was trying to decide what I could do that was different. And it occurred to me that not everybody has miter saws. Not everybody has the ability to create wood frames like that. So I'm going to make a frame out of these skewers. I'm going to show you how you can do it too. So I'm just using dog nail clippers, but with these skewers, you can use a really sharp, um, pair of scissors. If you, um, have a pair of sharp scissors, you kind of, um kind of work it like twisting it around i'm not explaining that very well um but then i also sometimes will use my wire cutters but somebody had suggested to me these dog nail clippers i thought it was a great idea so that's what i am using and you saw that my method of measuring is just to measure the length of the placemat and then i cut off one length and i'm just using that to measure the rest of them it's a, <laughs> you know Crafting is my happy place. I don't always like to do math in my happy place. So um, this is how I am measuring it. And then I got it all lined up where I wanted the frame to hit. And then that was how I got the measurement for my sides, right? So you don't have to be good at math to do crafting. So now I am just going to keep trimming these all down. Um, I did five skewers for each side. So top, bottom, each had five skewers, right, left, each had five. Once I had them all cut down, I am gonna line them all up to the best of my ability and I'm gonna use my wood glue. So the wood glue is gonna give this the best possible bond. I'm gonna kind of mush it in between the like in the crevices here for the skewers. Now they're not all super straight. So I was having to work with them a little bit to make sure that the gaps were filled in. So what I'm going to do once I have all this glue on, I'm actually going to come in with some hot glue to help me secure it until the wood glue um, has a chance to dry. Um, so it usually sets up in about 20 to 30 minutes. And I don't want to have to sit there and hold it for 20 to 30 minutes while it sets up, right? So I added the hot glue in the middle there. Um, this is sped up, remember, so I did wait for it to cool down before I started touching it with my finger and just making sure that it was like pushed down and, you know, just trying to make sure that the top of it is smooth because this is going to be the back of my picture. Well, my picture is going to be adhered to the back of this, right? So I've got to make sure that it's all relatively flat so that the picture lays nice and flat so you can see that i was using the parchment paper also to help press it down and i found that that worked really really well so i'd apply the hot glue and use that parchment pet paper to kind of smooth it out after a second once i had all of my um, pieces together i got them all laid out and then um, made sure that they all fit on here I did decide that I was going to sand down the ends of some of these because they weren't super flat and some of them were a teeny tiny bit off. So I just want to make sure that everything was going to be nice and lined up and even. So just using the, the sandpaper as you see here. And then once I had that all done, I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to glue them with the hot glue and I'm just gluing them in the crevices 
just enough to um, create that bond. And again, I'm going to use my, my parchment paper here to get it all nice and flat. And then I will flip it over and I'm going to be using the wood glue as well because it's really important for that bond to use the wood glue. So got this all set. Got this all set. <laughs> I'm flipping this over, perhaps. There we go. And uh, I'm going to just kind of pull out the little pieces that um, of the hot glue that kind of uh, made their way through to the other side. And now you can see I'm using the wood glue on here to just help with that bond. I'm just dropping it into the crevice and using my finger to just wipe away any excess um, because I don't want it to be obvious that there are blobs of glue there, right? And the wood glue will dry clear. So it's all good and it should help create an, a nice bond so now you can totally keep this the natural color and i did think about doing that um because i mean it's got that straw color and it might go well with the fall theme and everything but i did ultimately pull out my antique wax by waverly and i'm using it with a baby wipe just to help it glide on and you know serve as a stain for this project I did start doing the back and then I realized, silly, it's gonna be covered up. You don't need to be doing the back because we're going to adhere our picture to it and it probably will adhere better if I don't put the wax on it. So I'm out of frame right now, but I'm just making sure I get the sides really well so that those are not um, missed. So once I had that all set, I'm able to go ahead and line up my design. I decided it was a little bit too long for it. So I wanted to trim off just a teeny tiny bit off of both sides. If you do have to trim, remember that you do want to take the same amount off of both sides so that your image remains centered when you are putting it together, right? So I took off somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. It was not a lot um, and just made sure that I was taking off about the same amount on either side. Once I had that all set, I could go ahead and lay down my picture and I'm going to come in with hot glue once I have this lined up and uh, get this all adhered to the back here. So just checking it again, making sure I have it lined up and then I'm going to go ahead and lift up the one edge. Lifting up the one edge <laughs> and applying some hot glue. And then I'm going to press that down and just make sure it's nice and secure. And I'm going to wait a minute for that to cool before I do the rest of it because I don't want that to end up getting lifted. So again, I am moving a little bit faster than uh, because this is sped up. So then I'm going to draw a bead along both sides as well as the bottom there and then press it all down. I'm going to flip it over so that it can lay flat and all adhere really nicely. Uh, I think this looks so cool. I love this, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and um, cover the back with craft paper. So I'm just measuring out a piece that's about the right size. I'm going to cut off the excess that I can set aside for a different project for some other day. And I'm going to adhere this to the back of my project with hot glue. Now, I knew that I needed to work quickly with this. And um, I went ahead. Yeah, I probably should have done what I did the last time, you know, when I had heard the picture and just put down one little side at a time. But um, yeah, I decided I was going to go for it, put down the whole thing. So I've got all four sides of the hot glue here. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and put down my craft paper. And of course, it's like curling up on me and not getting to where I want it right away. So I get it down and my glue isn't adhering everywhere. It's adhering in some places, but not in all places. So I'm like, ugh, what now? So what do I do? I take my little mini press that I have sitting there for a project that I, I did previously, but you're gonna see a little bit later in this video because I didn't do them in the same order in which I actually crafted them. And I'm ironing the hot glue to reactivate it so that it melts into my craft paper. You know, it's find a way or make a way. I didn't want to have to rip it off and rip off all the hot glue and, you know, have to cut another piece of paper, waste my supplies. So, yeah, that's 
<laughs> I'm, I'm ironing the hot glue. <clears throat> Whatever works, right? So, and it did work. So I got that all nice and activated. And then I pulled out my, um, my mat. What is that called? A self-healing mat. Pulled that out and grabbed my exacto knife and I'm gonna just trim off the excess paper the same way you've seen me do a thousand times just make sure that that's all nice and neat and ready for finishing up so once I had all of that trimmed away I did uh, decide I was going to uh, pull out um, some twine for the back <clears throat> now I was afraid at first to put um staples into this i considered it and that was why i was kind of looping it over for a second i'm trying to decide how i want to do this and like i said I, I hesitated with the staples because of this being skewers and i was afraid that the staples would wedge themselves in between the skewers and kind of break my frame apart so i decided i was going to do the hot glue and once i um had the one side cool enough that I could pull on the other side. I went ahead and um, glued that side down as well. Now I'm still thinking about it because clearly this is only being supported by the glue on the back of the craft paper, right? So now, don't get me wrong, this piece is really very light. I mean, it's a, a simple placemat and skewers, right? It's not super heavy. It's not like it's regular wood. Um, so I had added a little bit more hot glue, but then ultimately I did decide that I was going to try to staple it with my staple gun. So I used the quarter inch staples, so really um, short staples. And you're gonna see here in a second, I'm gonna put it right over where I have the hot glue. And like I said, I was a little nervous about it, but it actually ended up working out just fine. I don't know if I just got lucky, but it it worked out really well. And then I put more hot glue down over the, here I'm just checking it to make sure that um, everything is good, pulling away some hot glue <laughs> and all is well. So I'm gonna add some more hot glue to the staples so that they don't scratch the wall on which this little piece is hanging. So I just added a whole bunch of hot glue to cover up the staples and it kind of serves as a little bit of a buffer. And I love this piece. Let me know what you think. DIY number three. All right, I have some scrapbook paper. This is from my big paper pack. Um, I had gotten that at the Hobby Lobby. And then I have this little wood frame, for lack of a better term, that I had gotten from Plaid. And uh, this is my paper cutter. Obviously, I am using the little buffalo check pattern to my advantage to kind of figure out where to measure things off. And just using the, the wooden piece it might actually be called a cradle. I'm not sure why it's called a cradle, but I think that's what it's called. Um, but I'm using that itself to identify where I needed to cut it. Mod Podge, I am going to use the iron on method this time. I am really excited to try it. Well, I was very excited to try it. Obviously, I've tried it now and I do. I loved this method. It worked out really well for me. So while the Mod Podge was drying, I went ahead and um, created something on my Cricut and got that all taken care of. Once it was all dry, I've now got the piece. I've noticed I put it down wrong because it was slightly off. So now I've got it down properly and I'm going to get ready for um, ironing. But uh, by creating a piece of parchment that is the right size. I am having trouble talking tonight, you guys. Um, but going to go ahead and get that to the right shape or the right size so I can just set it down inside my little tray here and, and iron it on properly. So I grab my little Easy Press Mini that I've got there and I'm like, it's not hot. What's going on? Where's the, is there an on button? I hadn't, um, is it plugged in? I'm checking to make sure it's plugged in properly because it's been a while since I've used this and I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. Ah, there's an on button. Okay, yeah, that helps. So, <laughs> you know, 
Ah, Corey. So anyway, I went ahead, I was able to get that all ironed and I set down my Hello Fall. It looks like I somehow managed to delete the footage where I was actually ironing it, but I did get it turned on. I did iron it. It worked out great. Um, you just want to make sure that you do use the parchment paper. Um, in order to prevent your design from getting burned or scorched or whatever. So that worked out really well in the end. And now I'm just applying my Hello Fall and peeling back the transfer tape. And this Hello Fall was already designed actually in the Cricut Design Studio. So it was just one of many that I picked out for this project. This was inspired by something that I saw online. I'm not even sure if it was on Pinterest or I'm not sure but I saw it online. I thought it was super cute, just really simple. And that is pretty much done. I did decide to add a couple of Jenga blocks to it because um, when I was trying to stand it up on my craft table, it was a little teeny tiny bit wobbly. So I'm just adding with, again, the wood glue, a couple of little pieces to the back to just serve as supports so it can stand on its own. And I love this piece too. I love the simplicity, but I think it's really, really pretty. And you can stain this one as well, but I left my natural this time. But let me know what you think. And now it's time for a shout out timeout. Nice rose. I love all of these pumpkin and floral decorations. So pretty and cute, Kathy. These little garlands are so sweet. Absolutely love them. I would love to give you a shout out as well. If that's something of interest to you, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. All right, I have another Dollar Tree placemat and a wood round from the Hobby Lobby. This came in a pack of six. I believe the pack was $7.99, so I thought that was a great buy. And I just got it lined up centered on my image, and I used a pen to trace it out. And now I'm just going to cut it out with a pair of scissors. So once I have that all cut out, I'm just going to make sure that it matches up. I'm going to get this adhered to my design. I'm going to use wood glue again for this and then once i have this all nice and um, adhered well you can see i'm putting a pretty generous amount of wood glue on here i'm going to go ahead and get it uh, pressed on here and i'm going to use one of my little squeegees to kind of uh, press it out so to speak so just making sure that the whole thing is nicely adhered um, and then i'm going to grab my mat again and cut off the excess now I did not wait long enough for that to dry and it did start sliding on me. So it ended up that I had some wood showing, you know, in certain areas, but ultimately it didn't really matter because I was, I'm going to be covering up the edges, so it'll be good. So I grabbed um, a bunch of florals and greenery from my stash and I have the eucalyptus leaves that I'm going to end up putting down first. And if you have followed me for any amount of time, you know I'm very visual. So I tend to want to see things in place before I'll commit to them. <laughs> so I'm just going to lay everything out around the, um, the image here, um, kind of like a wreath, and just get everything the way that I want it before I start gluing stuff down. So I'm going to go around with the eucalyptus leaves, but you could use whatever types of flowers you want. It doesn't have to be greenery. It could be all flowers. I opted for the eucalyptus leaves and then these little mini, um, ugh, they're not carnations, mini mums. So I'm just clipping off all of the little um, buds or stems, I guess you could say from the picks and I'm just placing them all the all around um, kind of staggered with the greenery. These are from Dollar Tree, the mini mums are. The eucalyptus um, was from Amazon and you can actually find that in my Amazon store. And the link for that is in my description box if that's of interest to you. 
And I do want to thank everyone for all of the support. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I appreciate you all so much. I can't even begin to tell you, and I know I say that all the time, but I really am sincerely grateful for every single one of you. And if you're new to my channel, I hope that you're enjoying the projects. And if you are, I hope you'll consider subscribing and coming back and visiting with me again sometime soon. But uh, definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you're liking about the videos or just say hello. I love to hear from all of you. And it actually does help my video to grow because the more comments, the more likes that I get, um, it just, it shows YouTube that there's interest in the content that I'm putting out um, and it helps get me in front of other people. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for the support. So as you can see, I had gone ahead and glued down the stems, but now I want to make sure that um, all of it is secure around the, the wreath. So I did glue it down in a second place with each of those greenery pieces. And now I'm coming in and tucking in the mini mums, just adding a little bit of glue to the base of the stem and tucking it in amongst the leaves. And once I get that all situated around and get all of those pieces in place, I decided I was going to take some of these berries and do the same thing. So I'm going to stagger the berries in between the mums. So obviously in between the greenery again, but I'm alternating it essentially with the mini mums and doing that all the way around as well. Now you could certainly add a ribbon to this if you wanted to. I opted not to. I just wanted to leave it the way that I have it like this. And I just think that it is such a sweet little piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a piece of twine. This was something left over from another project. I had taken it off of something. And I'm just tying it in a knot to make a loop. And then I'm going to take that loop, making sure that that knot's real tight, and I'm going to flip this over, and this is what I'm going to use as my hanger. So just making sure that I've got it in the right place so that everything, you know, is not crooked or cattywampus when I go to hang it up on the wall. And I'm using wood glue again, just making sure that I've got a generous amount of it and getting that adhered. And then I'm gonna put some hot glue over top of it for the, the short-term bond so that we can get that long-term hold without the piece like falling off or doing anything we don't want to do. And that's about it. So let me know what you think of this one as well. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the projects, please remember to give me a big thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, because it really does help my channel to grow. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.